Ya Allah, Ya Allah, si sebenza ko Ya Allah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadu Rasulullah, la ilaha illallah. After the hamd and thana and the praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I would like to thank the organizers of the event for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that man lam yashkuri nas lam yashkuri Allah that whoever does not thank people has not thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we begin after the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after sending peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we begin also with thanking the organizers of the event. You know, they say that in life, there are no guarantees. However, Allah SWT mentions one thing in the Quran that is a guarantee, where He mentions, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ That praise your Lord Allah SWT and be amongst those who prostrate to Him. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ and worship him until yaqeen comes to you, until certainty comes to, comes to you. And the Mufassirin mentioned that the yaqeen, the certainty that is being mentioned here, is referring to death. So Allah SWT calls death a certainty, that this is something that will happen for sure. He mentions about the Prophet Sallallahu that we have not made eternity for anyone before you. That when you will pass away, do you think other people will, other people think they're gonna stay alive forever? No. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ That every single soul shall taste death. However, this death that we know is a certain event, this event is not one that is, a, that is awaited. It's not an event that we know it's going to happen, so now we just wait until it happens. Rather, death is an event in our lives that we prepare for. It is not an event to await, it is an event to prepare for. Once a person came to the Prophet ﷺ and he asked him that when is the hour, meaning when is the hour of, when is the day of judgment? The Prophet ﷺ, instead of mentioning to him that no one knows and I don't know and so on and so forth, the Prophet ﷺ in return asked the, asked the question himself that what have you prepared for it? That it does not matter when the Day of Judgment will come, the more important issue is what are you preparing for the Day of Judgment? Meaning that the Day of Judgment isn't something that you just await, it is something that you prepare for. And our death, this is something that's called Qiyamah Sughra, it's a smaller Qiyamah, it's an individual Qiyamah, it's a Qiyamah that will be established for each one of us when we will pass away. So that thing, that smaller qiyamah, that is our death, that is also an event that we don't await, rather we prepare for it. Now the way that we prepare for it is that throughout our lives we engage ourselves in the worship of Allah SWT and try to please Allah, please Allah SWT. So naturally we want that at the end of our lives we also pass away in a state in which Allah SWT is pleased with us. So one way that we prepare for death is that throughout our lives, we constantly make the dua, the Ya Allah, when we pass away, take us away the state of Iman. That when we keep us as Muslims throughout our lives and keep us as Muslim when we pass away as well. That's one way we prepare for it. Another way that we can see the prophets before us, alayhim salam, also prepared for their deaths, was that they would advise their families. Allah SWT mentions one generation one of these stories in the Quran, when he mentions that وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ يَا بَنِيَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينِ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ That when Ibrahim السلام, and Yaqub السلام, when they advised their children that 
worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen a deen for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this deen for you. And do not pass away except that you're in a state of Iman. Except that you're on this religion. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions specifically when Yaqub Islam, when his time was supposed to pass away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Am kuntum shuhada is hadra Yaqub al maut Were you there when, when death came to Yaqub salam? Obviously we weren't there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what happens. When he asks his children that what are you going to worship after me? When Yaqub is passing away, his main concern isn't, first and foremost, isn't his estate, first, is not anything else. First and foremost concern is to make sure that his family remains on the straight path after he passed away. So he asks them that what are you going to worship after me? To which they respond, To which they mention, and they reply to Yaqub that we are going to worship the one and only Allah SWT, the same Lord of you, the same Lord of Ibrahim and those before us. To which, after listening to that, Yaqub said he had a peace of heart. One of the, another important aspect of preparation for one's death is that one makes sure that he pays off his debts as soon as possible. That one pays off his debts and settles his debts before his death. We know that the example of the shaheed, a person who passed away in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how beloved is that person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that يُغْفَرُ لِلشَّهِيدِ كُلُّ ذَمْ That for that shaheed, for the martyr, every single one of his sins will be forgiven in the thing. Then the Prophet ﷺ made an exception, he said, except for deaths. That's not something that will be forgiven. That was something that should have been settled in his lifetime. So much so that the Prophet ﷺ we know that whenever a person would pass away, the Prophet would, would lead the janazah. And who would not want the Prophet to lead their janazah? However, it is also said about him, Jabir radiallahu anhu narrates, that, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يصلي على رجل مات وعليه دين That the Prophet would not lead the janazah of a person who had a debt on him. And there was a story when a person was brought to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, Jabir radiallahu anhu mentions that, that utiya bi mayyitin, that a janazah was brought to the Prophet ﷺ. That the Prophet ﷺ, when the janazah was brought to him, he asked that does this person have any vein on him? Does he have any debts on him? To which the people responded, Yes. How much debt did he have? Dinaran, two dinars. That's it. He just had two dinars of debt on him when he passed away. But the Prophet ﷺ, because of the fact that he had debts that were unsettled, the Prophet ﷺ said, that you guys go ahead and you pray on your companion, meaning the Prophet would not lead the janazah. Such importance to settling a woman's debt. Now, the Sahaba, we know about them that ikhwa, the believers are like brothers and the Sahaba are truly like brothers. So, Abu Qadad al Ansari, in this specific case, he came to the Prophet and he said that, Oh, Prophet, this person's debt, it is on me now. That whatever debt he had, I am taking responsibility to settle it now. So when the Prophet ﷺ heard that his debts had now been settled, then the Prophet ﷺ said, okay, then I will leave, and then he left the janazah prayer. But that's, that's the importance of death. That the Prophet ﷺ would not even need the janazah of a person who passed away, and he had debts on him. <coughs> now, when we're talking about estate and distribution of the estate and leaving a will, we know that when, the, when Allah SWT mentions ibadat in the Qur'an, for example, he mentions, when he mentions prayer, he mentions fasting, the rulings are general and the details we get from the ahadith. The Prophet, Allah SWT mentions, tells us to pray, tells us to fast in Ramadan. But then all the details and all the rulings and all the masail, they come from the ahadith. So that Allah SWT mentions the ruling and the details we get from the ahadith. However, when it came to inheritance, such Im so important is this topic of inheritance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned all the details in the Qur'an itself. And if you look in Surah Nisa, verse 11 to 13, Allah subhanahu wa mentions all the details of inheritance there. That if this is the case, scenario one, this is the distribution. If this is the case, then this. If this is the case, then this. Allah subhanahu wa went into all those details, which shows us the importance of this topic. And the Prophet subhanahu wa added to that, the Prophet subhanahu wa mentioned that تَعَلَّمُ الْفَرَائِذُ وَعَلِّمُهَا النَّاسِ فَإِنَّهَا نِسْفُ الْعِلْمِ that learn 
the laws of inheritance, learn inheritance, and teach it to other people. This is half of knowledge. This is half of all knowledge. Umar radiallahu mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentioned مَا حَقُّ إِمْرَيْ مُسْلِمٍ لَهُ شَيْءٍ مُصَى فِيهِ يَبِيتُ لَيْلَتَيْنِ إِلَّا وَصِيَّةٌ مَكْتُوَةٌ عِنْدَهُ That Umar رضي الله عنه narrates from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned that if a person has something to leave behind it as well that it is not appropriate it is not appropriate that that person spends even two nights without having a will written that not two nights should not even pass except that that person has his will written down Now when we're talking about a will, there are two things. One is called mirath, what we term as inheritance, and another is called wasiya, which is bequests. So there's mirath, which is inheritance, and then there's wasiya, which are your bequests. Now the difference between the two is that inheritance are those shares that, are per- that Allah SWT has set for a person and that every single person will get that. Whoever is a recipient, whoever is, a, is an inheritor will get that. The father will get a certain share. The mother will get a certain share. The son gets a certain share, the wife gets a certain share, the spouse gets a certain share. Those shares have been set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot say give more to my wife. I cannot say give less to, give less to my son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set those shares and those shares have to be given, no matter what. If the son is disobedient, you cannot deprive that son. Those shares have been set, no matter what, that person will get that share that they have, they have been given. A person does not have a choice, I cannot say give him more, give him less. If that person is inheriting from me, the share has been set. That is mirath, that is inheritance. That is necessary. There's a second thing which is called wasiya, which are your bequests. And this is optional. A person does not have to make, does not have to leave a wasiya. This is optional. And what wasiya bequests are, is that Allah SWT has given a person a right for up to one third of his wealth. That that person up to one third of his wealth can distribute it as he wishes. The only restrictions here is that it cannot be more than one third of your wealth. And you cannot bequest money to somebody who's already inheriting from you. So you cannot bequest money to your spouse, your, your parents, your children, because they will already inherit and their shares have already been set. But you can bequest money up to one third of your wealth, this is optional, but you can do up to one third of your wealth and you can give to whoever you wish. You can give to the masjid, you can give to the mother's side, you can give to your, your cousin who's not going to inherit from you. You can give to whoever you wish, up to one third. Not more than one third though. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu mentioned that قَالَ مَرِدْتُ عَمِلْ فَتْحِ مَرَضًا أَشْفَيْتُ عَلَى الْمَوْتِ فَتَانِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَعُودُنِي that he mentioned that he was close to passing away and the Prophet ﷺ came to visit him. So, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas mentions that he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet Allah وسلم, inna li malin kathira laytha yirisuni illa ibn Tayyya afa'usi bi mali kullihi that, O Prophet Allah وسلم, I have a lot of wealth. I have a lot of wealth and the only ones who inherit from me are my two daughters. Can I, can I bequest all of my wealth in the path of Allah? So the Prophet ﷺ said, no, you cannot bequest all of your wealth in the path of Allah. So then Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas asked, فَثُلُثَيْمَا لِيَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Then at least two-thirds. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, no. Then he asked, فَالشَّطَرْ Then at least half of it, at least half my wealth can I give in the path of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, no. Then finally Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas he asked, فَالثُلُثْ that at least one third of Prophet Allah وسلم, to which the Prophet Allah وسلم, responded, فَالثُلُثْ وَالثُلُثُ الْكَثِيرُ That, okay, up to one third, and even that is a lot. Now sometimes a person thinks that if my children are well off, then what's the point of giving, leaving money behind to them? Why don't I give them the path of Allah? Why don't I give to the masjid? Why don't I give to the mother's house? Why don't I give to the orphans? I'll give more thawab that way. And if I just leave behind money to my rich children, then I won't, I won't get as much of a reward. However, that's not true. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in, in the khutbah when he gave at the Hajjat al Mudar, he mentions that, In Allah, he mentioned about the ruling about that you cannot bequest money to somebody who's inheriting. And then 
the Prophet also mentioned that إِنَّكَ إِنْ تَذَرْ وَرَثَتَكَ أَغْنِيَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَنْ تَذَرَ هُمْ أَعْلَةً يَتَكَفَّفُونَ النَّاسِ That if you were to leave behind your inheritors wealthy, that is better than to leave behind, to leave them behind in such a state that they're asking people for money. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that إِنَّكَ لَنْ تُنْفِقَ نَفَقَةً تَبْدَغِي بِهَا وَشْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أُجِرْتَ بِهَا حَتَّى اللَّقْمَةَ تَنَفْعُهَا إِلَىٰ فِي إِمْرَتِكَ That every single, every single good deed that you do for your family, hoping for the reward of Allah SWT, you'll be rewarded fully for that. So much so that even that the morsel of food that you lift to the mouth of your wife, even that you will be rewarded for. Saying that even if a person, is, and he's, he's telling this to Sa'ad ibn Abi Atlas, Saying that you want to leave behind money in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in the service of your inheritors. However, if you leave behind money to your inheritors, you'll get just as much thawab as you're thinking you will get giving that money out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you will not be deprived of any reward. Now we know that every single one of us will pass away. Now when a loved one passes away, grieving is natural. However, this grieving should be done still within the bounds that Allah SWT has set for us. We know that at the time when Ibrahim, the son of the Prophet وسلم, when he passed away, there was an eclipse. To which some of the Sahaba said that there has been an eclipse in, out of sadness because of the death of the son of the Prophet وسلم, To which the Prophet وسلم, immediately rejected and said that the sun and the moon, they do not eclipse for anyone, anyone's death. Thereafter, the Prophet وسلم, mentioned Expressing his sadness and his grief about the passing away of his son, he mentions that the eyes tear and the heart is saddened. The eyes tear and the heart is saddened, but we do not say anything except that which is which pleases our Lord. He mentions, indeed, O Ibrahim, referring to his, his son who has passed away, we are bereaved by your departure. Then he turned towards the mountain. The Prophet also turned towards the mountain, and to express his grief, he mentioned that, O oh mountain, if you were as sorrowful as I am, you would have certainly crumbled into pieces. That's how sad the Prophet was. That's how sad the Prophet was when his son passed away. But the Prophet mentioned that, but we say what Allah has ordered us to say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiru. That even with that much sadness, the reacting to that death and, and the way to grief was still within the bonds of Allah, the bonds that Allah has set. And the Prophet did not say anything that was, does not please Allah. He mentioned, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi wa Now, when a person passed away and their janazah is brought, that janazah should be rushed. You do not wait for family members to come from outer town and so on and so forth. When the janazah is brought, you rush that janazah as soon as possible. The Prophet once to Ali radiallahu anhu, he gave him three advices. Or he gave him one advice, but he mentioned three things in it. He said, Three things. He said, Ya Ali, thalathun la tuakhirha. That, oh, Ali, radiyallahu anhu, three things, you never delay them. You never delay these three things. And if you look in our society, these three things are always delayed. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, ثلاثة لا تؤخرها, three things, do not delay them. الصلاة إذا آنت, the prayer when the time has come. When the time for prayer has come, pray. Do not delay your prayer. والجنازة إذا حضرت, the janazah when it is brought, Pray the janaza, rush that janaza, do not delay the janaza. And the third thing was, For that unmarried person, as soon as you find an appropriate match for him or her, then perform the nikah, do not delay the nikah. No, no engagement this year and nikah next year, after studies, after med school, so on and so forth. When you find the appropriate person, perform the nikah, do not delay the nikah. Now also what we also do is, when after that person passes away, then of course, you know, we send thawab to that deceased person. The Prophet ﷺ, for example, mentioned that لَقِينُ مُوْتَاكُمْ يَاسِينَ That recite Surah Yasin for your deceased. So after the person passes away, we do their janazah, then we make sure that we continue to send thawab to the deceased person through acts of sadaqah and such. Now when it's time to distribute the estate, there's an order in which the estate is distributed. And it has to be done in this order. The first thing that you will do when a person passes away from their estate, you will pay off their burial expenses. The first thing that is done from a person who has passed away is his burial expenses are paid. 
followed by second will be the settling of that person's debts. If that person still had any debts left behind, then those debts will be settled. So the first, you'll pay off that person you'll, from their estate, you'll pay off their burial expenses. And second thing will be that you settle any debts. Now from any money that is left over after this, you will see that the, did the person make an optional, we'll see an optional bequest up to one third of his wealth. If the person did, then you will distribute from that wasiya. And normally the wasiya that people make bequests are, for example, a person had a prayers that he did not pray, a person had fast that he did not make up, that he had to make up, and he had to pay fidya for, for example. So when the person passed away, they write in their wasiya before they pass away that I have, for example, this many fast left, and I'm performing one, or I'm performing two every week, for example, three every week. So a person knows that when he passed away and when he made the will, how many fasts he still had to make up. And then the, the inheritors, his children, his spouse, will pay fidya for every single one of the fasts, for example. That's something that you leave behind in your wasiyah. Now after the wasiyah has been settled, or if there was no wasiyah, then from the remaining wealth, you will give the mirath, you will give the inheritance, the spouse will get a certain portion, the children will get a certain portion, the parents will get a certain portion, and so on and so forth, depending on who is alive. Now, what happens a lot is when we're talking about the distribution of the estate and the inheritance, there's a, mo there's a misconception and there's an objection that is brought by people sometimes, the Orientalists for example, where people say that the laws of inheritance in Islam, they're not fair. They say that there's an injustice because we know that the son gets twice as much as the daughter. They say that the son gets twice as much as the daughter, hence this is unfair. However, this objection stems from a lack of understanding of financial responsibility.